Okay, howdy, howdy, everybody. Welcome back. It's me. It's me. I'm here. Former tracks time. Cataclysm time. Oh, let's see. What are we doing? There we go. All right. I think everything's working. Looks like we're good. Uh, so, yeah. Cataclysm dark days ahead. This is uh, Nadia the second. We're just moving along in our challenge, doing things, going places. A lot of traveling. A lot of traveling. Uh, we stopped near another cow farm. So many dairy farms now <laughs> in map gen. Uh, we did some unspeakable things to some cows. And uh, we did some experiments in our vehicle. And here we are. So, let's see. I'm going to do a little bit of, uh, little bit of maintenance before we, we get rolling here. Nerfed FEMA cams made them pointless to go to again. Eh. I guess I missed the uh, the heyday of the FEMA camp <laughs> ammo supply. I don't know. I mean, we had ammo everywhere, and then now we don't have as much ammo everywhere, and yet there's still enough ammo to do stupid stuff. So, ah, just watched Evil Dead Two for the first time. Twas rather silly. Well, that's because it's just Evil Dead One made with more money. <laughs> I mean, Evil Dead Two is just a remake of Evil Dead One. Instead of doing it for like, uh, I don't know, $8,000 with some college buddies, it was done via with a little bit of studio money. So yeah, don't let that put you off, uh, you know, Army of Darkness, which was originally supposed to be titled Medieval Dead, which I think would have been a much cooler title. But apparently that was, uh, that was a little too, too, uh, too, too, too intelligent for most folks, so they went with Army of Darkness. And that's an even sillier movie. But now, if you want the good stuff, watch uh, watch the remake, the new 2000 remake of Evil Dead, and then uh, Army or the uh, the Evil Dead TV series. That's good stuff there. <laughs> yep, yep. Mm. Got our boomstick. Gotta, gotta keep the primitive screw heads away from your boomstick. <laughs> so many, so many lines taken out of the Evil Dead series and stuck onto uh, Duke Nukem. And a later content. Uh, all right, yeah, here we go. So, let's do what I said I was going to do. Sort, category, um... Yeah, things we don't need. We don't need guns. We <laughs> can't use them. Bombs are fine. Grenades are fine. Explosives are fine. Uh, we're keeping the welding tanks. Keeping... I don't need two atomic coffee makers. I guess maybe. If I decide to make the, uh, the hat. Alright, let's uh, go down this list again. Oh, do, do, do. Gotta keep our candles. Uh, I mean, I have an independent chemistry set, but we have the chemistry, vehicle chemistry lab as well. So probably don't need that. We'll keep it temporarily though. Don't need multiple entrenching tools. Um, I have a vehicle forge now. Don't need a gas forge. Don't need extras of those. <laughs> My pickaxe with Hack Pro. Not sure what I would ever use a reciprocate recipro <laughs> reciprocating saw for. Definitely don't need that.
Yeah, who knows how much of this stuff I actually care about. We'll skip through this. It's fine. It's fine. Alright, what else? We're also going to rip off the laser rifle and the turret mount. We're not allowed to use those, so no point in having them. Um, and we're going to pull off a storage battery at some point, but we'll leave them as they are for the for now. I don't think I need a medium storage battery either. All right, useless crap. 350 pounds and 76 liters. That's just a first quick pass to get rid of some stuff. Hey there, Vinix, Vinx, Vinx, greetings Vinx, and friends, welcome. Every time you play this, uh, <laughs> the kid of the class of preschoolers eat me, yeah, they're one of my most hated enemies, the stupid child zombies. Bad, bad child zombies, they're annoying. Alright, so, uh, yeah, we're, uh, we're hanging out, making some adjustments to our monster quad, our modified quad bike, before we get moving again. I think I got most of this useless stuff stripped off of it. I guess I could put the solar panel back in this position now that we're not gonna have... Not gonna have a turret. Not allowed to have a turret. Yeah, I think we're good now. So we got our off-road back up to 30%. That's good. Increase our speed a bit by dumping that excess weight we're not using. Uh, what else we got? Sort by weight this time. So, got my tank of clean water. We're going to keep that. Keep the anvil. Got to keep the lab. I probably don't need this much lumps of steel laying around, but... We can get rid of some later. I'm still undecided on the autoclave. And we got a whole bunch of welding tanks. Another 60 liter tank. But most of the stuff I'm going to use at some point. Alright, I think we're good. Time of day is it? 1900. Uh oh. I burned most of the day away. Let's try to get to a few more endpoints before we uh, settle in somewhere for the evening. Don't need to do anything over there. Will I be enjoying DF tomorrow? I will not. I will never be enjoying DF. <laughs> the commonly asked question. Uh, I have no intention of playing Dwarf Fortress. I don't care about the Steam release. I've played Dwarf Fortress's Dwarf Fortress many times over its decades of development, and I just have no interest in going back and relearning it for the fourth or fifth or eighth time. Uh, the genre that it spawned has has moved on, and it unfortunately has not. It's just dived deeper and deeper and deeper into its own little rabbit hole of inane uh, detail levels and stuff. So. I'm much happier playing the uh, the brood of games that it spawned uh, that have actually winnowed away a lot of the useless chaff and uh, actually inserted more gameplay and less uh, trivia. So, yeah. More power to it. Hope it does well. I think it'll be a big flash in the pan in, 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 <laughs> in the short term and then it'll disappear back into obscurity. So. But no. I will not be enjoying Dwarf Fortress tomorrow. You have fun with it. Great game, go for it. Not interested. <laughs> A 
Well, let's get going. Goodbye, cows. I have decided not to sacrifice you on the altar of bovine mutations. All right, so we're trying to get... Oh, my God. you got to be kidding me. So many dairy farms. So many. <laughs> now that the uh, mega farms are in, please go back and revisit the distribution <laughs> for... Uh, for stuff uh so many dairy farms now we've, we've probably seen god i don't know 10 so far now that we have these mega farms in there's a lot less uh, endpoints being taken up by the little farms but uh unfortunately right now that's showing a huge amount of certain uh, certain types of endpoint locations we'll go see if this dairy farm's been taken over by the zombies do we have cows or zows? And is there yet another quad bike? We have zows. And we have yet another quad bike. That's like quad bike number four or five. <laughs> so many quad bikes. All right, I got bad news for you, cows. You're not long for this, uh, this world. And another one. <sighs> uh. Time to time to make a screenshot and put it on Reddit. Blair to the world that we got too many damn dairy farms. Yeah, we're I'm I'm trying to stay near that location because it's kind of an interesting area where we've got. Uh, oops, I've already gone a little far away from it. <laughs> we had uh, we had the military base. Next to the Exodii base, next to a Triffid Grove, <laughs> um, next to uh, Fungal Flowers. Yeah, that's uh, that's quite the area. Can't imagine what's going on over there. And there's some other fun stuff in the area. So we're currently trying to stick to kind of this area. Because uh, we had the science lab, which we, we already finished the science lab. And then I wanted to go in and get that hunting supply store, that library. I noticed there was another hunting supply store and library combo up here. Actually, I think that's the bookstore. Uh, and there's another hunting supply store back there. I still don't have my light amp goggles. So we're just checking out some high density endpoints in this nearby area, but they're all turning out to be stupid dairy farms. Too many. Many too many. Oh, no quad bike, no van. What else we got? We got a wind turbine, so that'll fill in my map for a long way if I can get into it fast enough. We get there quick enough before we lose the sunlight. Oh, we have worm sign. Shy Halud. Uh oh, worm sign's gonna get right up to me. Uh, great. I'm gonna have to deal with this stupid worm. Gotta leave the bark piked on, parked on the pavement here. Goggles. Torch. Reload torch. Uh, that's fine. Activate. Is he going to get me before I torch this? He is not. Cool. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. And goodbye, goodbye, and goodbye. All right. Let's take a look around. So, yeah, we had the, uh, the triumvirate of dairy farms. We knew about the steel mill. Don't care, don't care, don't care. Then we end up butting up against the river. Uh-oh. Whoa, look at this. Well, this is weird. We got a science lab with an attached anthill on top of a TCL. How is that going to work? I have never seen these two things so close together. I guess the TCL facility below ground actually adheres to the the footprint up above but <laughs> are we gonna have the science lab abutting into the tcl area 
And it's all on a little island. There's gonna be ants everywhere on that island. What a mess! Yeah, that's that's interesting looking. All right, what else we got? We got a uh, radio tower, yet another hub facility that I'm not going to visit. We got the town of Merrimack. And not much north of it. More Migo stuff. Looks like that's about it. All right. And it looks like we do have a clear road connection back this way. I wanted to check these as we kind of arced our way back towards these towns. Unfortunately, I don't have a way of getting from the north side down here without going through the neighborhood, which is not a really good plan in the vehicle we're using. And the prison. The prison could have a prison could have a, a lab underneath it as well. There, there could be. Hmm. Yeah, what a mess. The only thing of note really is that weirdness over there. Alright. Um I gotta decide here. Do we go mess with that first? I'm more inclined to finish my, my tour of local endpoints and do our raids into these cities. Then go visit that craziness over there. Yeah, let's let's do that. Not a long trip. All right, so we're gonna go northwest, pick up this road network, and then roll out this way, back towards Chinchester. We'll need to find a place to sleep as well. Um, there'll probably be a farm or something up that way before we completely lose the light. What do we got? Bookstore? Maybe. I guess we'll just roll up the road here. Says Jack, no thanks. Look at that perfectly functional police SUV. Uh, well, maybe not. <laughs> not so functional. Well, let's go ahead and rip out the uh, the battery, though. Thirteen more sulfuric acid for us. Riot control. Nuclear energy. The three-faced riot control stop point. Interesting. I don't see those very often. Hmm. Yeah, I don't care about any of that. Oh my god, you gotta be kidding me! Oh, wow. Wowzers. So, in addition to all the other nonsense, we've got right over there, we've got a TCL with a big underground uh, area if you've never seen one. We've got a, a science lab with a big underground lab. And then right here, not far from it, we've got another lab entrance in the form of this air shaft. And that's what all the, uh, from southwest and below you hear explosions, and we're also hearing gunfire. That's because there's a lab directly under us, and it could be, it could be a, 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 one of the mutated labs, distorted labs. This is the second distorted lab location we found. It's not guaranteed to be a distorted lab, but we're going to name it as such. 
And again, we're not going in right now. We're going to finish our above ground activities here in the local area. Then we'll, uh, we'll work our way over this way and we'll have three big underground facilities to take a look at. Should I decide to go in? I don't know if this character can actually do these places. Not being able to do... Whoa. Oh, that's the gunfire. Not being able to use ranged uh, it would be really, really, really bad in some of these labs. Really bad. Insert as many reallys as you can. It's, it, it seriously would be bad. <laughs> Let's see. Do I want to try to do a run in on the uh, the bookstore? Directly above me there? Uh-oh. Grim Howler coming at me from the south. I almost didn't see. All right, what's our stats looking like? Speed 100 is good. Dodge 10.7, good enough against these enemies. Um, let's go ahead and temporarily ditch our gas mask. All about swords. I don't really need swords, but uh, I'd like to know all about them. What are you doing in here? And how'd you get in here? All right. Are we still collecting uh, half liter jars? Meat soup. Silly zombies. Marijuana. Uh-oh. 
Yep, <laughs> that's what I thought. I knew it as soon as I saw what type of basement I was in. Uh, we'll just leave him alone. Last bottle of vermouth. Let's grab a sci fi novel and a crime novel. Uh, you don't need anything out of the RV. I don't think we need anything else here at all. So I need to uh, find out where to source latex or shredded rubber in large quantity. I don't think I'll have a lot of uh, luck finding medical gloves, balloons, or condoms in, in job lots. So I'm assuming shredded rubber is butchering tires, I'm hoping, but I'm not sure that's the case. And latex, is there a particular clothing uh, that I can butcher to get latex. Shoes? Yeah, shoes might actually work. I didn't think about shoes. Uh, I <laughs> love it. Sandals. I've been having a devil of a time finding shoes. For some reason, uh, the world just doesn't generate with shoes. So I'll have to keep an eye out. There's been so few shoes found. That's pretty much the last thing I need to keep the uh, the monster quad in fine fiddle. Just to get the wheels fixed up as needed. All right, let's uh, fit the road network heading. I don't think I'm gonna go up that way. Let's just go down straight straight along this way. How do you enter through such a vent? You just smash it with just about anything. There's actually a vent and you just smash it and it opens up and then there's a ladder inside you climb down to get into the lab. How can you tell where the worm is? It's just from the little humps on the ground, little dirt clod. You'll see little, little humps of dirt on the ground and you know there's a worm if another hump appears and then another hump appears and that's the worm moving. So. You can tell as it's moving where it's at, if it's ground that hasn't been disturbed already. But once it's within an area that's already fully disturbed, you don't know where it's at until it pops its head up and tries to bite you. Going back through chat. 
Do to do to do. Are there enemies faster than the average car? I don't know what you mean by that. That's not a real question. Cars can go many speeds. There's almost nothing faster than about 12 kilometers or 12 miles per hour. There's a few things that'll keep close to that, like the um, the white or the uh, the the green deer. <laughs> um, but so there's a couple things that are close, but no, nothing will keep up with a car that's at all fixed up or repaired. What's the plan to raise Dodge to 10? We're hoping to find a Shoggoth. I would like to do some Shoggoth training. Yeah, you can infinitely dodge Shoggoths. The, the problem is with the nerf to dodge, the, the original issue with dodge was that you could dodge as many times as you had effective dodge with minus two per attempt. So if you had an eight dodge skill and you got nearly naked, you'd have like, 16 or 17 effective dodge you had your free dodge every round you had whatever free dodges your martial art gave you so that added between one and two so let's say you had three dodges for free that you would do and then any attacks you received in a single round after those first three one first three free ones it would deduct two from your effective dodge so you went from 17 on the fourth attack to 15 on the fifth attack to 13 on the sixth attack etc that still lets you dodge 10, 12, 14 times, depending on what you were fighting. Um, and I mean, I demonstrated how broken it was by being surrounded by eight predators, and I dodged, I don't know, 15 times in a, in a single round, a single second, <laughs> which is just so, so outrageously silly. Um, but that's what was the problem. The nerf was they hard capped how many attempts you get. You now have your free one and your martial arts one. They totally removed that minus two to effective dodge for each extra dodge beyond those. Those are now gone completely. But a Shoggoth only gets one attack per round, so you're, you're, you're fine. The, the nerf had absolutely nothing to do with doing dodge training with a Shoggoth. Affects it not in the slightest. Because you still get your free dodge, and this martial art gives me an extra one, so I've got two per round, which is more than enough. As long as it's just me and the Shoggoth, I will always get to attempt to dodge his attacks. Now, he might be able to tag me once in a while, but with 12 strength, I don't think he'll be able to do it to hit me hard enough to, to kill me or anything, so... <clears throat> yeah, but it's all down to how many attacks coming in per round. Now, I didn't pick hooves because I can't find enough shoes. I picked hooves because the uh, unarmed combat is completely broken. <laughs> and you can't level it up. It levels up about 30 times slower than it's supposed to. Hmm. Yeah, the speed rating controls both movement speed as well as attack speed. It's all the same thing. So the reason why I tell that story about getting hit eight times in a single round by a horse is because in order for horses to move fast, they have to get them at a high speed rating. The consequence of giving anything a high speed rating is that the mechanic system uses the speed rating also for how many attacks you're allowed to have. So high speed rating to move equals lots of attacks per round. Therefore, when I accidentally bumped into a horse, it used its massive speed rating to beat me to death in one round with its eight hoof attacks. <laughs> so, anything that moves really fast, be scared of because they get extra attacks. That's why you don't see me often fiddle with the, in world generation, I almost never touch the how fast enemies get to move the speed rating for enemies. Uh, I don't often touch their hit points either. You can change their, their hit points and you can change their speed. Be ultra cautious if you go fiddling with the speed settings because even tiny little changes have really, really outsized effects on the actual gameplay. So just realize what you're doing and what's going to happen. Let's get moving again. <laughs> there should be separation of move speed and attack speed. You know, in a perfect world. <laughs> in a perfect world. 
You can have that same sentiment for pretty much every single thing in the game. There are always ways that it could be better, could be more streamlined, make more sense. You got to play with the cards that you got dealt. And the modders today got to deal with the underpinnings and restrictions and limits of the engine and the systems that were originally put in. My number one wish for Cataclysm, and the regulars have heard my speech, the my number one thing that I wish they would do that I think would vastly improve the game, but I don't think they will ever be able to do it, is to make the numbers bigger. Put a zero on every single number. Make all the numbers one number, one digit larger. Instead of having skills go zero to ten, have skills go zero to a hundred. Instead of having damage for guns go from one to a hundred, have it go from one to a thousand. The, the problem the game has now, and the problem everybody complains about in regards to end game content, is we now have more and more and more and more and more and more and more items being crammed into this tiny little box of numbers, and there's no way to differentiate them. I mean, we've got a thousand guns, 990 of them are effectively no difference. <laughs> they, they're just not going to do a damn thing different between one and another because they all are crammed into this little tiny numbering system that it wasn't designed to handle the massive bloat that we've had in the game with all the clothes and armor and weapons of every imaginable type. Super easy to add a weapon. People just keep adding weapons. Doesn't matter if it makes no difference in the gameplay whatsoever, but their favorite little hobby weapon that they love in real life is now in the game. Great. It's no different from the other 70 weapons of the same general type that we already have. So I just wish that we could just make the number system bigger. All of it. <laughs> There's just too much stuff in this little tiny number system that wasn't designed to handle this kind of, uh, this kind of bloat that we've had over the last decade. But I don't think it'll ever happen. I think it's too big a task. It's going to change too many things. There you go. That's that's former Thrax's speech on what I think would uh, improve the gameplay the most. Give all the different weapons and armor and items and enemies and character builds and so on. Room for growth and differentiation and so on. And then in another decade, I'll say tack another zero on. <laughs> Just once again, all the crazies out there will have added their million different uh, favorite little items. And we won't be able to distinguish anything again. So, yeah. Another roadblock. And if I was doing a static base, <laughs> I would have so much nuclear power. I'd be able to run a small city on all these nuke generators we got sitting around in the middle of these fields. Well, this isn't looking good. Retirement Community Park, huh? And a couple of farms. Hmm, can I get through this without getting shot? I think I can. What the hell am I looking at? This actually is a community. So this is the central park of the community. And then on the outskirts, we have a community building, retirement homes. Interesting. So this is an entire new POI I haven't seen again. So much new stuff. Is it full of, uh, is it full of grannies or is it regular folks? <laughs> and are they going to have turrets and stuff? Is that stairs? We have stairs. There are stairs. Hmm. That looks like a subway. That is a subway station. I wonder if this is attached to towns kind of the way uh, evac shelters are. Generally speaking, evac shelters are auto-generated just outside of towns. So if you see an evac shelter, there should 99.9% .9 of the time be a town nearby that it's kind of part of. So I wonder if this does something similar. If it generates a town and there's a chance that a nearby endpoint will be an attached retirement community. And uh, the, the retirees here, they don't have to drive. They just hop their attached subway station. Takes them right into town to another subway station. Hmm. Uh, I can't think of a reason for me to go in here, but... 
community centers, administration buildings, and then just houses surrounding a park. Might be an interesting... I wonder if it's um, sized in such a way that you could do a faction camp in the middle of this, right in the community park. <laughs> I don't know if this is forested or if there's trees in here or if it's just flat grass. And I know nothing about the faction camp system, but it uh, might be interesting to set up a faction camp in the middle of something like that. Lots of early game loot. Hopefully it's got zombies. I'm seeing zombies, so... I guess we can stop real quick and take a look around as soon as I beat these zombies to death. I don't see anything too dangerous so far. We'll dump our backpack while we take care of some light work. You're going to make me blind. Let's kill everybody else first. Alright, now you can make me blind. I am unblind. From Coca. Um, hopefully this generates like a standard, uh, wait a minute, let me go back and get my, my gas mask, just in case there's something stinky down here. I hope this generates like a standard subway and that the lower section has got, uh, enemies in it. Yeah, there's a few at least. Four standard zombies. there would be more condoms than wallets, but <laughs> I haven't seen a single one yet. So here's the reason you usually come down here, other than getting to the subway. Right in here. No toolkits this time, no toolkits. And only an electric jackhammer. But gas jackhammers and toolkits are the primary reason for coming down into this room. Probably shouldn't hang out down here. Could get sniped by a Migo scout or something. All right, um, subway map. No subway map. Why are there not subway maps in the subway areas? That seems a little weird. I think there should be a subway map somewhere. If not a paper one you pick up and read, like normal maps, that at least, uh, you know, a map on the wall showing the local subway system. Subway map. Chichester stop. <laughs> well, thanks. I knew that. But you're not showing me a map of where it goes or anything. Uh-oh. Do we have an actual subway car that functions? We do! Two-seated motorized Drazine. If I can bring it a little bit of gas, it's in perfect condition. We could go on a, uh, a Drazine ride. Oh, another one. But it hits the end of the road right there to the south. Meaning we'd have to take it north and get through those weird junctions. It would absolutely go off the rails. There's no way I would get these things through those connector points there. 
that's one of the disappointments with the uh, the subway generation. It'll instantly go off the rails. No way I'd keep that thing in attached. Let's hop on for a moment though. How's this one down here? You got more gas? Not much. Uh-oh, it's going backwards. We uh oh, experimental mutant. <laughs> Hold on, experimental mutant in the subway, and that guy is red. That might be somebody we can actually level up some XP on, but he's got scales, fur, and chitin, and long talons. Hmm. Oh, you don't have evac shelters 95% of the time in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> that is not how it works. And I've got 5,000 hours of YouTube video that will explain to you how that is a totally facetious statement. <laughs> oh, just reveal, turn on debug, reveal the map, and you'll see the city. <laughs> Let's see. I kind of want to fight this guy. We're at 11.9 right now. 11.9 is pretty good. That's with our backpack on. Yeah, right, let's give it a go. We got stamina. We can run. I know I can outrun the guy if I need to. Uh, it costs 150 for him to step onto the rails. Black ground for me if I avoid the rails. Let's fight him. I think I'll fight him over here. I'll stand here, try to get him to step to this position where I can then hit him a few times. Then I can back up a step. And yeah, we'll try that. We'll see what happens. I don't know how well this guy will be able to hit me. Actually, I need to move. I've just lost my, my stance. Um, all right, we'll move. So what are we, what are we at currently? We're at uh, 1%. <laughs> we started at dodge six. This is how much dodge XP I have earned so far this entire run because none of our opponents other than the hunter killer zombie, I think is where we got that 1%. None of the opponents have been a uh, high enough challenge level for us to gain any XP off of because our skill is high. So I've got to find dangerous things to practice against in order to raise this dodge skill. That's what we're trying to do is get dodged to 10. Um, the other ones I chose are pretty broke. Unarmed combat's totally broke. Even though we've got hundreds and hundreds of melee unarmed combat kills, we've only gained 1.37 levels of unarmed combat because it's hilariously broken and has been apparently since October. Uh, and then the other one we were going to do uh, perfect 10 in was uh, uh, the... Uh, doop, doop the um, athletics, but the one and only way to raise athletics to 10 is just to go squat in some deep water for hours and days and days. And that's nobody's interested in watching me do that. Uh, so we, we had to bag that one as well. So unfortunately two of my three uh, skill level 10 things we we're going to try to do are just useless and broke. All right. Um, yeah, let's, let's see how long we keep getting one more, then I need to back off again. Problem is, we're going to kill him too quick. We're still only at 1%. Yeah, oh well. Hey, 2%. We gained a percent. <laughs> we have so long to go. Oh, man. That is going to be really fun to raise to 10, let me tell you. All right, let's finish wrecking this Drazine off the tracks here. So it's going to follow the track around to the right. 
Uh, sure. We'll just see where it goes when I just say go. Great. You're going to go straight off the tracks? Alright. Oh, and now we're stuck. Can I back up? Nope. Yep, now we're stuck. <laughs> it's so useless. Hey! Vehicle's not moving, but because the uh, engine was running and it said it was moving, I was going to end up diving off. All right, let's get out of here. That's, this is not going to help me any. Yeah, I, uh, the problem's going to be, I think I need to be fighting things that are also high dodge to learn. And finding an opponent with both a high danger level and a high dodge is going to be rough. I don't think Shoggoths have much dodge. I'm not sure how effective our dodge training against the Shoggoth actually is nowadays. Tiring out. Weariness. wonder if we can pop the manhole and go down there as well. This is my backpack. I am wearing my backpack. <laughs> it's called Long Rope. Somebody renamed it. <laughs> That's why it has 48 items in it. A hiking backpack. <laughs> I have I have a funny bunch of helpers that like to rename all my crap in confusing ways, so I'm always constantly trying to find my obvious stuff because I forget what they've renamed them. So, yes, we are wearing my backpack. Appreciate the concern, though. <laughs> Easy mistake to make if you don't know the hilarity that ensues from all the shenanigans the audience likes to get up to. Huh, I can't break those, so I still don't have my Halligan bar either. I mean, I can torch my way in. It's funny, I still haven't gotten a Halligan bar. Um, I don't know if I care enough to torch my way in, but I can see the, the, the woods over there, so that, that is an actual park with woods. Tennis, tennis court? Yeah, I mean, it looks like a pretty fun place, but I mean, I don't need housing items. So, I think we'll just uh, we'll just move on. Interesting though, an interesting addition to the uh, the map gen. Um, that's right. It is getting late. I am gonna need to sleep somewhere soon, and there's not really a better place nearby unless I clear out a house or a neighborhood <laughs> and a house over here. Maybe we'll go see. We'll use this as our fallback. We might have to come back here. Don't want to stay out in the open. Not with potential for portal storms. Yeah, the C4 thing would be funnier. The problem is it's going to ask me for the timer settings and such, so it's not like it's going to blow me up. It's funny because I might not remember and activate it on accident, but it's not like a grenade. A grenade instantly goes hot and you got to get rid of it or, or, or get away from it. Uh, but C4, you got that secondary menu that's going to pop up, so... It's a funny thought, but it's not actually going to execute the way you would hope. Gambling hall. Yeah, I think we'll 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 come back through the trees over here and we'll see if we can clear out one of these houses or maybe the neighborhood for the evening. And um, we'll sleep lightly. Try to wake up while it's still dark. Actually, I I still don't have a light amp, but we don't have the moonlight bonus now. Am I gonna do a city raid without light? Those can be pretty hazardous. Of course, there's a leather beside sport car seats and clothes. Those are the best location, best things. Find a sex shop. Go tear up, rip up all the bondage gear in a sex shop. There's lots of leather there from all the bondage suits and leather skirts and all that kind of stuff. 
And at least they changed the time it takes to take apart the uh, the vehicle seats. So it was taking a ridiculous amount of time previously. Now it's much more reasonable. Otherwise, it's just know you're going to need leather right from the start and be uh, chopping up leather backpacks and leather skirts and leather pants and leather jackets right from the get-go. Instead of deciding you're going to make something and then going, okay, now I need to go get some leather. <laughs> that's, that's not a good plan. Leather's one of those things you're almost always, if you like to create your own gear, you're almost always going to need, and it's somewhat hard to source, unlike cotton and the other things. So always be grabbing leather from day or from hour one, and you don't usually run into that little problem. Uh, yeah, let's, uh, let's back around the other way. Now don't hit the tree, please. Er, gonna hit the tree. Gonna get a hitchhiker. Yep. <laughs> All right, we're gonna fight right here. <laughs> that didn't go the way I wanted it to. Get off my vehicle. Turn off my light. No, no grabbies. I said no grabbies. When you grabby, you get bitey. I don't want any biteys either. Still waiting for shoes or condoms in a wallet. Still not seeing any. Okay, let's plan out that movement a little cleaner next time. Oh, of course it's a boarded up house. Not that we can't fix that, but... Metal back door, huh? Ideally, I want to find a house that's got uh, an upper story. Basement would work, depending on what basement. Oh, fireman, bring me my Halligan bar. Air horn, no Halligan bar. Yeah, there's just almost no no shoes in the world. We noticed that when we first started this run, trying to figure out what I was going to use for footwear for a kicker. Wooden clogs. <laughs> uh oh, somebody is angry. Leather duster. Steel toe boots. Maybe steel toe boots. I would rather find non filthy ones. I just don't want to go through the hassle of having to clean things up. Duct tape. All right, let's go see what kind of basement we got. Well, this might work. Epinephrine auto injector. Yay, we got seats we can sleep in. How much water we got? 50 clean water. Good amount. Not sure why we have a tent set up down here with a roll mat, but, well, you know, whatever. Soft and fairly warm beats the gr beats the ground for sleeping on. <laughs> And how many bottles do we have? A couple bottles. Could always just hide in a box, drag a box into a corner, sleep in a box. So can you put a blanket inside of a box and then sleep and get the bonus? <laughs> can you put can you can you drag a box on top of a sleeping mat and then get the sleeping bonus or deploy a sleeping mat, a roll mat? Activate. Roll mat. Here. Can't place roll mat there. Oh, oh well. 
Oh well. No sleeping in a cardboard box. What's this roll mat made of anyway? Where you at roll mat? What are you made out of? Plastic? Uh yeah, plastic. Don't need plastic. 